What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Boiler Tracks, a show by Boiler Upload of the Rivals Network. Today, we have two very special guests. Ray Phil Davis, Big Ten basketball analyst, former Big Ten defensive player of the year, and then Lou Jack, the point god, all-time winningest point guard in Purdue history. Fellas, what's up? What's going on, Doug? What's going on? What's up, man? How you doing, Doug? Uh, congratulations doing... on the, uh, the new stuff. Thank you. I appreciate Big that. Big time. I appreciate you guys uh, coming on. Um, first, we got. I think we got to start with crew life and and everything that you guys are doing. I mean, what's it been like for you guys? Not to only do things for the communities, um, but also be embraced by Purdue as well. I got. Uh, it's been a uh, crew life has just been amazing, man. Just obviously what we stand for, just. Knowing the story, I think it's still a little bit early to tell the story, but me and Ray laugh about just just the start of it, but seeing where it's at in year two, going on year three now. Um, the support the support by the Purdue fans and the Purdue family has just been amazing. Sometimes, uh, I think you think about when you sign to a college and you hear a lot of players and you hear the spiel that hey, we're family for life, and everybody doesn't get to experience that. Like the Purdue family. It don't matter. Like, I'm probably, what, 10 years almost removed, you know what I mean? It's decades apart, but still being able to go back and not only the players and the organization respect us and help us, but the community, the Purdue family. You know, that's uh, it's been an amazing feeling just to see the Boilermaker support be behind us the way the way they are. Yeah, straight up. I mean, with the end, too, it shows, it shows the kids and the young, and just not even kids, but some of the older adults that, if you do things the right way or you treat people the right way, you go about your business, you handle things a certain way. And then you uh, also, if you win, I mean, we can't, I would be remiss if I just, I mean, if you win and you do a university, right. The university treats you well forever. So especially in this era of young people seeing kids transfer, jump school to school, when they come to, with us to Purdue for a Saturday for a game and they see the type of love or, respect we still get on campus they understand why it's important to stay at university or why that makes sense that when you're finished playing like like Lou said we're moved from playing but now we're able to host events in the raw say in the in the clubs and we're doing things where both of our fundraisers this year produce current president who's a former governor attended in Fort Wayne and met Dr. Chang attended the one in Lafayette. So, I mean, you got both university presidents there. You presidents there. You have some of the biggest voices, I guess I would say, of alums in those rooms as well. So that's been a big time to see the uh, it become bigger than basketball a little bit for everybody. But then also to be able to be in position to help the guys. I mean, like I was joking with the guys. I mean, they got paid to come to dinner. We just had to go sit at dinner. We just got, we just got to go sit at those dinners. Just had to go sit at them and mm, talk. <laughs> so, I mean, like they got paid just to come and sit. And I don't know they're doing other stuff, but in the sense of we're able to build something that not only helps the communities, our youth, it helps the Purdue brand in a sense. When you think about what Purdue guys are doing, it helps the um, kids with the NIL stuff be able to have. Because, I mean, even if it wasn't for the Purdue Alliance, we could still get one of the guys and we could go run a camp and we could be able to help pay them and get them some summer money or something like that. And then things like that, it's just been a, it's been great to be a part of. Yeah, and then and I, paint, I would say paint has really, uh, yeah, a lot of coaches talk that shit about they're going to be there or they tell your parents, once you come here, you know what I mean? I got you for that. But it's the thing where paint, you know, Sherry, the uh, paint's wife, it's a thing where they really treat you like one you one of theirs, and they even to the point of my kid. Sherry wants to Sherry likes to sit, get pictures of my kids, so it's like it's really just to the point where you do Purdue right, and Purdue will do you right for a long, long time. Yeah, and I think kind of going back to the NIL thing that you mentioned. I mean, this is what NIL was made for, for guys to have that opportunity to to go and be a part of something bigger than themselves outside of basketball. Um, and that's right. what, and that's, I mean, you guys got, I think all the men's basketball players at the, um, 
bigger than basketball fundraiser, or I don't know if it was a fundraiser or the the cookout, and then you guys yeah. had women's basketball players there as well. Yep. And I think that's big too to have both both teams represented, um, everybody be a part. And then when we do stuff like this, like we had that's when like with a Lou Jack, when a Lou Jack goes to work with kids, it influences a James Blackman Jr. to say, I want to do that. It influences Deshaun Thomas to say, I want to do that. And you get guys doing that again, and then now you get other guys doing it as well. It does nothing but just help a lot of the – and especially where youth basketball is right now as a whole, you need guys that have really done it to kind of show the kids. And when you get both the men's and the women's – because I look at my high school, my high school team, Southside, they're struggling to field three teams. Like, I don't know how girls basketball is where you guys are from, but it's not even just my high school. It's probably four high schools in the city where they can't get a freshman JV varsity. They got to do a varsity, and then they take some of the freshmen – and then they try to convince the sophomores to play if you never played before, but then you're still allowed to play freshman. So it's just the girl, and, it, and it's come to the point where girl, man, for a while, had a time where girls' basketball was going. And now it's to the point where, but when you get Purdue win, women's basketball team a part of something, young girls see those girls, and it, it's just something. If you see it, you could be it. If you touch it, you just know you could do it. So one of those things. Now, why do you guys think that? I know this is kind of off topic of what we we're talking about, but why do you think that youth basketball has kind of went in this way where it's, oh man, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about money. <laughs> Everything is about money. If you got money, you can play. If you don't got money, you can't pay. If you tall, you won't have to pay. If you somebody, if you could dunk the basketball when you're in seventh grade, it's just things that back in the day you could go to the YMC. Yeah, and I'm saying back in the day, but because like I'm gonna say back in the day, but back in the day, you go to the YMCA, you may see one of the old heads down there, you may help you with your jumper, with your dribble, you may go play pickup at the park, you may do certain things. Where now I reach out to one of the city, the community centers in our city on the south side of town, right in our neighborhood, to use the gym to train some kids for free, and they say no. So it's a thing where it's big business now, it's things where it's really political when it comes to gym space these gyms are expensive but then trainers guys that used to do it i don't know how it was in decatur but guys that used to do it for free for us or just work with us or mentor us or pick us up and take us it's those guys aren't doing that i mean those guys got pushed out and now if you can't in my neighborhood if you can't afford it you really i mean because now especially too this will happen in my neighborhood like just specifically to mine we had two ymcas one on it's like a triangle in my neighborhood. We had one here and one here. They're both YMCA leagues, whatever, whatever. And then on this part, we had the church, like the little church league. All three of those leagues shut down. You got the the the, the kind of like city AAU program got taken over by the bigger program in town. And it's just a lot of that started to happen, and the kids couldn't necessarily get better from – like, if you're not getting better from, like, third grade to, like, seventh grade, when you get in high school, it's going to be tough for you playing against kids that's just been getting better. Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I think about Grady's high school, Grady Eifers high school, they've been playing together since third, fourth grade, same team. They know, You know what I mean? They may add one or two by the time they're in high school, but it's just – it's different now, I would say. I got a whole spill on it. <laughs> I, would, I would piggyback off of that, but, like, some of the coaches you said, they're, like, that care, and it's not about the money. They've gotten pushed out because, respectfully, it's true. Parents. Yep. Parents are now starting to look at youth sports as a business. Mm-hmm. So some of that, when you play for the local team or that team that didn't have the sexiest name, it was more opportunity, and you could get out there and get in front of coaches, or you got the exposure to get better as a player to where now everybody wants to play for the top program, which is a good thing. But if I'm the eighth man – playing on the top program and I'm playing six minutes respectfully, I'm not getting seen. I can go over to X, X team, B team over here and possibly maybe be the second, third guy, maybe, maybe be the guy. But, but now I have opportunity to play a little bit more, but so yeah. many parents are hearing from coaches that haven't played at the highest level or even really understand recruitment. And they're, they're scaring parents early. Well, your son don't play with us in sixth, seventh grade. He won't get recruited. 
Facts. Realistically, most coaches aren't looking at six, fifth, seventh grade. We got to get better. Facts. We got to get better, but parents are getting scared because coaches are telling them about the exposure early. And they don't they don't know how college coaches really actually go to recruit what Facts. they're looking for. So parents are Purdue's kind of and more specifically, Coach Painter. He doesn't seem to have fallen into that NIL transfer portal type type thing that a lot of coaches have, I guess. Um, you look at the guys that he's brought in from the portal. I don't know if – I don't remember if they had one last year, but they only brought in one this year when you could argue that they needed a few heading into the offseason. Uh, true. true. Uh, I think with Paint, just in that situation like the NIL, it sounds cliche and it sounds like it's corny to say because I can say now hindsight looking about him like, it's not just all about the money or just the instant success at Purdue. Like, of course, he wants Purdue to win. Of course, that's the main goal. But it's also, too, I got to get y'all prepared for life. Like, as much as I look back sometimes to them four years and I'd be laughing, like, some of them life lessons he was teaching me at that time, of course, I didn't get it. But now I look back and it's like, damn, that makes sense. It benefited me five years down the line, six years down the line. And it's unfortunate with this NIL deal for some some schools. Kids are going to get money. They're not going to be properly taught how to use it. They're going to run through it. And that's that's the catch-22. But, like, somebody with paint, now he's been able to make sure all of his guys are getting some money out of it. But there's also some structure and balance to this that now that money they're getting, they're going to know how to handle that money when they're 23, 24, 25 in life and not just blow money fast. And now we're back at what happened. So I think that's the biggest difference with him. He cares about how you're going to be in life after Purdue because you're still representing Purdue and you're still tied to us. And that all matters about building better people and the money helps though, you know? Hmm. And he's, and I think you gotta, you gotta get guys that, because when you get some money and you 18 or you 19, it changed a lot of people. Some guys, they've been wanting to play basketball all their life to get some money. And then you get the money at 19, you're not trying to hoop no more. So I think it's real. You got to be real strict. And then, too, you got to understand when guys, nobody's transferring to take less shots. So when you a coach, you got to understand that, like, dudes is transferring to come hoop. And if they not hooping, they're going to transfer again. So you got to get the right player that's coming to be stable, that's coming to win games. That's So sometimes fans or people outside of it don't understand that. Because in Illinois, you can go out and you can get a lot of talent in a transfer portal because you don't have – you didn't have much returning. They, the Purdue had All-American returning. They have probably, I would say, I'll probably argue this off season that if you look at four players, starter and backup, they have the best four and five combinations in the country in the depth. What do you think of those four guys? Even better than last year with TKR and Caleb coming off the bench now with years added experience, whatever. Zach could be All-American. Mason Gillis is the 50-40-90 guy. He 40%, Mason Gillis was led, was third on the team in three-point percentage, and he shot a lot of them. So <laughs> I think when you look at that, you got to understand that Maybe you don't need a guard that's coming in and wants to get 20 because maybe it's jammed up in the middle and that's you need a shooter. And you just, I mean, you think of David who came, he's made over 300 threes. I don't care who you playing against. 1,800 points in college and 300 threes. I don't care how long it took you to do it. You know what I mean? That's just a lot of made, that's making shots. So you got to go out and get what you need sometimes. And I think paint is to that point where, He's not trying to throw off the rhythm of it. If you get a Jay Nivey, you get it. Or Carson Edwards, you get it. But I don't think he's no longer chasing that. Because when he was chasing that, he was last in the league. So Yeah, and he's been open about that. Like when I've when I've talked to him, he's been open about kind of his pitfalls in that stretch and and what he did on the recruiting front. And now, I mean, we talk about it all the time. What you tell him? Coach O would call me and be like, because, you know, I was committed as a freshman. So I seen all these dudes commit, and these are all dudes I played with. Like, I know these guys. Like, I watched – and I hate, I remember he called me. I was at Lalamere for one of the guys. 
because we had a guy committed. And then the guy tore his ACL. You know what I mean? Sometimes you know how that goes. College basketball, it is definitely college basketball. That's when I learned. I was like, after he tore his ACL, I hurt my knee. I turned my meniscus. I didn't even tell Purdue because I was like, I don't know. I didn't even tell him. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I remember they called me and they Coach O was like, yeah, Ray, we're thinking about, you know, offering such and such, taking some. And I said, don't do that. <laughs> Straight up. I said, I don't think that's going to work. And, hey, <laughs> duh, duh. It didn't work. <laughs> Because I play, I play with certain people since we were 11, 12 years old. Because I would play for for Wayne teams. I would play for Gary. Te- like, I knew AJ since we were sixth grade. I knew Jay since ninth grade. Me and Jay went to high school together. I knew Ronnie. We and Ronnie played Illinois. We were sixth grade when I met Rune. I started playing with them. So I know these guys. That's how Indiana basketball is. So I know these guys for a long time. And for what Purdue wanted, I know some things just not. It's gonna, you know, y'all don't even match. You know what I mean? Like your personality don't match with that personality. That's what you gonna have to talk to every day. And now, at that point, me and O was real. We was cool. So, yeah, man. I think um, once Paint figured out, you gotta get the right guys that fit the right. Because Purdue is a system. I um, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I'm talking a lot. So, <laughs> but look, I think I think Paint really studied Bo Ryan and how Bo Ryan went about things, and how Izzo went about things. And I think he really formulates his – because now you think about how Michigan State, and this is my theory, they always kept a lot of bigs, bruisers, boom, Purdue now big. You think about to when Lou Jack was playing, that was one of the – J.J. really ain't had much – Rob ain't had much backing him up there size-wise. Now he's solid there, boom. You think about how Wisconsin plays, the way they kind of slow it down a little bit half-court-wise, the sets, such a defensive – it's just a lot of things that I think Paint is one of those guys that's taken from – the coaches that's one in the league and also from Katie, whatever, but, and it's really formulated just like a, a system where it's now it's to the point where it's plug and chug. You can, you can look at every team. I look at every team since Lou Jack and them, you can compare every team to that team, except the, the year when Biggie played the four with me, my senior year. But then you look back to that very next year, Biggie goes to the five, Vince is back at the four, they win the league. So I think I think it's, he's got back to what's comfortable for him, and it's it's been helping. Yeah, you look at guys like like a Dakota Mathias who comes in. I I think he I mean he didn't play all that much his freshman year, and yeah, then this you, past year. and then you bring it. That's but that's what Coach Painter does. He just yeah. brings in guys that are going to fill that role. Maybe not as a freshman. They're not going to be that that four star five star recruit. That's one two years and done. I mean, just, just think about it. Just think about it. You go Ryan Smith, Dakota Mathias, Ryan Klein. You got Sasha Stefanovic. Now you got Fletcher Lawyer. You think about it. You got Juwan Johnson, AJ Hammond. The centers is there. But then you got Robbie Hummel. You got – you go with a Vince Edwards. You you know what I mean? Aaron Wheeler kind of was that mode, the same type of player. Mason is that <laughs> same type of guy. You got the Lewis Jackson mode of – Quick, fast, guard your man type of point. Jay, John Octis was that way, just a little taller. You got no gel, just not offensively gifted. But as far as like the tough, the grit it brought at that position, that kind of is the, the head of the snake in a sense. Then you got the two normally you can get buckets. You got an Etwan. I averaged 30 in high school. It just, you know what I mean? They, you know what I mean? They, they tried to go post in those years. But you go, but you know what I mean? You go the down the line of two guards, that's kind of the one to go and get a bucket. And I think the freedom of the offense and the flow of it, it really fits the players as long as they fit the position. So, yeah, man, I could go all day about this stuff, though. You yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree. <laughs> one thing that I thought was interesting looking back, I'm uh, getting prepped for this, Sasha, Travion, and Eric, they all played around 10 minutes a game as freshmen. Obviously, Sasha was a retro freshman. The next year, they were the team's top three scorers. So I think that just speaks to how Paint wants to grow this program. Yep. It and is. You know, oh, go ahead, Lou. It is. I think uh I think I could speak in this. He's just my that's my junior year. And I think he learned with us early because we're the team that dealt with so many injuries. And people would always say, Well, they lost Robbie Hummel. 
Louis Jackson went out of injury. Chris Kramer's hurt. They're playing with walk-ons. It's only two, yada, yada, yada. You always heard those things. And I think he figured it out. I was like, hey. Well, he said, he said, Lou, I can't worry about coaching the guys I don't have. I got to coach what I got. And I think that's what speaks to his coaching. He's, he's great at X's and O's. But he's not the coach that's like, okay, my walk-on is here. He's like, how does my walk-on fit in this system if we go down? Bobby yeah. Riddell was able to start in Big Ten games because Matt Parent looked over as like, he knows how to get the job done. And I'm not going to say I don't have guys that's not capable if I don't get the four-star, five-star. We've seen it, obviously, down the line. Grady Ice, you look at him come in, you're like, he's a walk-on. Scholarship, starter. You go through all the shooters. Ryan Smith didn't play at first, learn how to defend, play hard. He, He's also a guy in his coaching work when he tells players, hey, if you work hard and you improve, you will play. And that's actually in his proof. You can go through multiple lists of player names. The guys that don't end up improving, they sit down. And you can't argue because the walk-on can get a scholarship and play. It's just, are you putting in the time for your game and do you fit Purdue's system? I think he's he's figured that out and been okay with fans saying, why is the five starting out there? Do you see that three star, that two star that you guys overlook because of the sexiness? But he gets the same job done. And he's going as hard as we want him to to win. Facts. Facts. I remember Drew Anthrop took my spot. Drew Anthrop. He like took, I mean, literally, I was playing and then I wasn't, and Drew was playing. <laughs> but you quick, could do nothing but respect it. <laughs> quick thing about Drew Anthrop, and that's the thing, even about Coach Painter understanding the walk ons and their skill level. We had a running joke. That class Durantham came in with, that's the class 09, that's Kelsey Barlow, DJ Bird, Patrick Beatty. Mm -hmm. Durantham beat all four of them in high school senior. Mm, I know that. So that alone just tells you what type of players even Coach Painter is looking at from the walk-on standpoint. Facts, facts. Mm -hmm. um, Lou, I did want to bring this up with you. This, this team kind of – I know they're different, obviously, but this team right now in 2022 kind of reminds me of that team in, in 2011, 2012, your senior year. You lose you, you lose Etwan and Jawan. This team loses Travion and Jaden Ivey, obviously. You got an All-American, All-Big Ten guy in Edie. Coming back, obviously, you guys had Hummel. I think this yeah. team is just a little, bit, a little bit younger than that team was. Um, how did you guys – deal with and I don't want to say overcome but how did you guys move forward without knowing Etwan and Jawan were going to be there it was an adjustment period I think the one thing we had was the staple of me and Rob with me Rob and Ryan were there so we still had those three guys you got Tyrone he was trying to figure himself out Kelsey Barlow was coming into his own DJ Burr was coming into his own so we kind of still had that staple of those three guys that were able to kind of Still had that old school tradition, but also I, I'll give Michael Shrewsbury a lot of credit because we had different days struggling. And I'll never forget, he told us in the film room one time, hey, just do your damn job. If you're the janitor, be the best janitor. If you're the boss, be the best boss. And we'll all come together and make the best product. And I think for the younger guys, it kind of starts settling in like, OK, I know my role now. I think we were struggling with establishing certain younger guys wanted a bigger role. Now, each one of Juwan were going, which is understandable. But we we kind of figured out in jail. And so I think with th this team, they already had the staple. You know, Zach Eady's the guy. We're going to build all Zach Eady. You're comfortable because Eden more than has played. He has some experience. So if he needs to play the point guard, we got that. Brandon Newman is still there. Mason Gillis. So those four, just the playing time they have. That's what you rely upon, Caleb. It's, you know, all those guys. You rely on that. We got experience. But now we have to trust Payne's system and not worry about who's going to be the next Jay Knight, Travion Williams. Let's win games and all that stuff works itself out. So those guys just have to trust the system and let things naturally happen. But if guys try to force being the man, that will be the problem. And then I, one thing they had, too, because I was on that team when those three dudes left. When you think about Lou Jack, Rhino, and Robbie. And the thing, we, and we went to CBI. <laughs> so I think the thing that you got to have, too, is that they had, not only were they all three starters, they, they all played. But, I mean, you think about Tyrone and DJ, they both played. Travis saw minutes, whatever. Sonny played. But they all had a voice. You know what I mean? Like. Lou Jack could control the locker room by talking. Robbie could control the locker room by talking. 
you can't you got to respect what Ryan O says you're not gonna play harder than them at time you know what I mean like they had they had examples of what they done and their voices were strong and they won games being leaders sometimes you gotta have that type of because when we came in I mean I'm just being honest like looking back on it we ain't respect the older guys like we didn't like Tyrone and little AJ and those dudes they had to respect Lou you know what I mean? Drew and those dudes, even DJ to an extent, they had to respect Rob and Rhino and those guys. When when we when Ronnie Johnson come through that door, Jay Simpson, AJ Hammonds come through that door. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> but if we had if we had a luge, a luge, like I say all the like Paint used to tell me, I missed my like I missed my my team I should have played for. This is my freshman year. He would say that all the time. He said I came in with the wrong kind of the wrong structure. So you get when you get uh what well, even one of those guys would have helped our locker room. And then that next year, when even T and those, I mean, when DJ and Drew leave, they were Drew was a boys, but some of the younger guys I did, but some of the younger guys didn't respect Drew just because sometimes the walk-on status just doesn't give you what it doesn't matter, but it's sometimes it just matters to some guys. Some guys look at it and they take it as I could hoop this guy already or whatever. But it just wasn't the respect given to the older, the older senior guys. And then that next year, you get some transfers in. Like I said, paint played in the transfer portal. You get Eric Peck, Sterling Carter. We get some freshmen come in. And again, there was no leadership. There was no one. I became a captain halfway through the year. And I barely said words that year. So it was a thing where when you have those guys, it doesn't necessarily matter. The, sometimes the talent around them because they could just get the talent where they what they need like coach Shrewsbury said do your job everybody had to find out their job those next couple years everybody was trying to figure out still trying to figure out what that role is and it was tough and I think now they've done a good job at addressing stuff like that early and um recruiting not to replace guys like not to I remember Payne said at one time in an interview I think he said something like like Anthony Johnson, Toronto Johnson, they were supposed to replace like Keaton Grant, Chris Kramer, or something like that. And it's just like you, instead of replacing guys, I think they're replacing roles. And it's helped a lot. And uh, my final point on this about this, and it's, it's just the most respectful way to say it. When Etoine he, when he and Juwan left, those are my brothers. That whole summer I worked out in my mind, like those players. It's had it's a respect it's a respectful thing like it's it's the competitor like those guys Jay Nivey is a special talent Travion special talent like obviously you know you you respect them but now that they're gone those guys have to be like yo the way we prove that we are good like those guys and yes the success benefited with them we have to win too that was my main thing that that whole summer was like. Hey, we're not gonna have a big drop off. We're gonna be in the NCAA tournament. You're not gonna sit here and say they couldn't win without those guys. Granted, yes, we won a lot more. They took us somewhere, but as that competitor, that's why we were still able to compete because we didn't roll over and just say, "Man, we lost two All Americans." And somebody in the locker room has to just take that on in a respectful manner. It's not a disrespect to those guys and what they did, but they're gone. We can't get them back this season is our team now, so it's time to focus on that. Yeah, I agree with that, too. That was the approach, too, going into my, my junior year. Like, because we didn't have that. When we came in, like, we just thought, like, just honestly, we thought, like, our freshman year, we just thought everybody go to the tournament. Like, it just, AJ finna get drafted. Like, this is just easy work. Like, this, cause that's what we saw from Purdue teams. But you, you get hit in the mouth. Nobody talked about going to the tournament all summer long. And that, we didn't go to the tournament for two years. But then that summer going into our junior, my junior year, it was, uh, I, we built this little thing. It was like, why not us in a sense? Like, why not us? And there's a thing where you got to kind of build that up. You got to talk about it, especially when you lose pieces. This year's team has got to have that feeling of, why can't we do it? You look back at the team, what was that, 2019? The team after PJ No Dudes left, they mm -hmm. all, all of those guys were backups. Even Carson, to an extent, they were Carson didn't start the year at prior, the, the year off. I think that year season prior season, but Grady was a backup. Klein was a backup. Matt was a backup. So it's like when you have that type of understanding, you can win games. You know how to win games. You've seen it. Now you gain your chance. You got to prove it. Ryan Klein was on a mission to prove that he should have been playing all along. 
know what I mean? I, you got a Carson Edwards, but you just need somebody to be consistent, get you 14, 15, maybe a game. You don't need them to go average 30, 40. If everybody doing their job, it just keeps rolling. And I think that's what um, that's what you got to grow old. And I think Payne used to always say that you grow old in college basketball. You um, you start to win a lot of games. You start to have tradition to winning. Now going to the Sweet Six, I'm having arguments of with with people about going to Sweet Sixteen isn't regular. It's not like just an expectation, like to do every single year. Like that's that shows a strong program. That doesn't show just something that we should just be doing. And we've got to understand where Purdue was after Lou left. And then to where it is now, it's a, it's a it's, it's been it's, it's like saying it's dub. It's like saying in two years, Nebraska's gonna win the Big Ten, and then they're gonna not, and then they're gonna compete for the, then they're gonna win another Big Ten, and then they're going to Elite Eight, and then they're gonna just keep rolling. Like, who saw that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think that it's been especially for them not to lose their job. We gotta say that too. So for the university to stick with pain and believe in that, it was a uh, big time. Like now, guys like. Brandon should take a step. Ethan Morton should take a step. You think about Mason, he should even take a step. Zach, there's no way in Zach. Zach couldn't have been happy splitting minutes. It's just like, as a player, as a type of player, I've just been around him. He wanted to play more. Now he has that chance. You know what I mean? Caleb's grown into another year. He feels like his body is physically stronger. So K- TKR, red, he got hurt after he redshirted. So... Sometimes when you when you like having conversation with guys that's gotten red shirt before, maybe they didn't run a red shirt. You know what I mean? That's so it's like a pride thing there too. So it's like a lot of guys could prove their way this year, especially when thinking about the league being so wide open. It's the year that it's not a dominant teams. Even even Indiana would be the favorite, but Purdue's not scared of Indiana. You know what I mean? It's still that factor of they're still little brother in a sense. So I'm excited for this year with the um what they can do. I'm uh, more excited than last year. I think this year's team will be a little more cohesive. I think defensively they'll be better just because last year and Lou, I, I was watching the film of Lou the other day. And when you know you're gonna play a certain amount of minutes, you know how to play those minutes. You know what I mean? When you know you're gonna play 30, I know I'll play my 30. I know I get a couple to relax, you know what I mean? A couple, you know what I mean? Woo, it work itself out. This year's team, there's nobody that's going to be – maybe Zach, but there's nobody on the perimeter that's going to have to guard that's going to be guaranteed a certain amount of minutes because you got somebody behind you. And last year's team, you had guys that just knew they were going to play. Like, guys knew they were splitting minutes. They just knew what the – you know what I mean? So, it was real lazy defensively. It was, like, bad effort at times. And I don't think – I think this year's team will have to play harder just because the guys won't stay on the floor. That's something I never thought about. Hey, man, it's early in the morning. I got you, baby. Hey, Dub, Dub, go look at all Coach Painter's teams, even our teams. His best teams is always just a guy his backup could take his spot. Exactly. And when you have nope. to make two, three mistakes and he can pull you comfortably and you know the other guy can do the job just as good, Nope. it sharpens, it, it, it keeps you sharp. That's the Wisconsin kind of part I was talking about. It was a point where Bo Ryan, even Greg Gar, when he started, you turn the ball over, you come out. It don't matter if you Sam Decker, Frank Kaminsky, Jordan Taylor, you turn it over. Come on. You know what I mean? And I think it's to the point where now you're not necessarily looking over your shoulder. Sometimes you are as a player, sometimes. But that's what, I mean, that's what it is. And in practice, it's more competitive. And that way you build a team because sometimes you have your first five. Like, we've had a situation. We had our first, like, my junior year, I think we had, like, nine scholarship players. Some, it was small. Like something like that. Eight, nine scholarship players. So our five, we kind of would dominate practice sometimes. You know what I mean? But when you got two fives that can go, you get you're playing. They're playing Division One high major talent. You're just getting better year after year, and I think this year they're gonna have to play a lot harder to stay on the floor. There's nobody that's just gonna demand thirty minutes out the gate. You can earn it and go get it, but you're gonna yeah. be playing hard earning it. Taking a look even, at, I look back to, I look my bad up. I look back okay. to my junior year. I'm get, I'm getting benched during non-conference. Like I was getting benched. I remember I took a couple threes again. Garner Webb and I had like 13 in the first half and Payne benched me. So I think like you know what I mean he like it was multiple games. Kansas State benched me. <laughs> we got to the conference season and you, you start playing harder. You can't take me off the court now. You know what I mean? And that and that's what showed that team that 
I was getting benched. AJ was getting benched. That's Isaac was starting. You know what I mean? So it's the thing where nobody, even PJ and John Noctis, they were going back and forth at the time. You had Dakota and Kendall. So it's like, it's to the point where you're not going to be guaranteed. You're not playing hard. You're not going to play. But once they get a group that's just going to play hard, that's when you're off to the races. And that's when you got the last place year in a team, in a Big Ten, that can come third in the Big Ten. You know what I mean? Because playing hard is value. I don't think last year, I don't think playing hard was value. And I don't think the production defensively matched the skill sets they had defensively at all. I'd agree with that. And you look at, I mean, you talk about the the best teams of the teams that your backup could take your spot. As of right now, in this not so secret scrimmage, the starting lineup was Braden Smith, Fletcher, Ethan Morton, Gillis, and Edie. Behind those guys, David Jenkins Jr., Brandon Newman, and then either Waddell or Heidi, TKR and first. That's not that much of a drop off. If Fast. you were just gonna go Fast. a whole whole line switch like Kentucky did uh back in the day. Facts. And that's yeah. what and that's what and that's what you want to get to as a college team. Mm-hmm. Like, cause now you got freshmen starting. The older guys gotta be hot. Like it's just they it gotta be it gotta eat you up inside to be Brandon Newman right now and not be on the floor. You gotta you gotta figure out why you're not on the floor, and it's just only gonna make you better. And I don't know, paint I don't think paint's one of those dudes who play like mind games. Like he's like, if he's going with you, he's going with you. If he ain't, he ain't. And I think it's up to the guys to figure out who he's going with and who he isn't. So, I don't know. And obviously, that all that stuff can change because you look at last year, Isaiah Thompson started off this season okay. as as a point guard, and then um, Eric ended up taking over. And every, every older guy should know that. Like like you said, every Brandon Newman, whoever's not starting that's older, that feels some type of way, they should know it. But they should also look at the history and say, well. As long as I do my job X, Y, and Z and I'm producing, I could be starting by the time Big Ten season start or game three. We've all seen him bench the top players to the bottom. You know what I mean? So nobody should be sitting there, even as I'm an older guy, being discouraged. I should know, hey, I got to show up, do my job. And Payne's going to play at the end of the day. A lot of players got to say this too. It is great getting your name called that starting lineup. I will never lie to you. To hear that is great. But when there's four minutes left in that game mm. and Matt rocking, you don't want to be on the bench. Okay. I say that all the time. When that popcorn going and the lights get and they get loud in there, you want to be on the court in that moment. Sometimes, like, it's not about who starts the game or whatever. It's about the trust is going to come and who's in it at the end. And if you're in the end of the game, you're Hooper. Like, you ball. Like, it don't matter. Like, if you're in it or a majority of the end of the game, if you're one of those guys that's in at the end, you got you, – you, you a guy. You know what I mean? So sometimes people get caught up in the starting roles or whatever, whatever. Or it's just – and that's why you say all the time about Travion and Zach. I'm not looking at who's starting. I'm looking at who's finishing because that's who normally is having a better game. You know what I mean? So I just think I just think that's going to come into play a lot this year. But like Lou said, you can't get discouraged. You just – it only got to be able to feed you because it is true. It would paint. And just the, when good coaches, it's fair. So if you start busting his ass in practice – you going to play. But he busting your ass right now. He going to play. And but, I've seen guys in the film room, in the film room, right before practice. We watched the film of the game before or whatever. Change your jersey over. Flip your jersey. Black and gold. Like, you go flip. Like, now the other guy's a starter. So, it could happen like that with paint. Or a guy may – this is I've seen this happen. Jacob Lawson fell asleep in film. Donnie Hell, you the starter now. Like it, he lost his starting, he and never saw a starting spot back. The next you know, I'm playing the four, and the next you know, both of those guys transfer. You know what I mean? So it's like, paint is that way that if you show them, you do it. But messy locker, messy life. You got to figure it out on your own sometimes. So I'm excited. I um I think this year's team, especially looking around the league, looking around the league, I just especially I don't know if y'all watched Michigan State last night, but like mm-hmm. they were losing by six at halftime. To Grand Valley State, they didn't, and you guys know how exhibition games go. It was a game until like eleven minutes left in the game. Like they didn't go right. by like fourteen, fifteen till about like seven, eight. They just couldn't last. They just couldn't. They just that mean yeah. practice. Oh, like uh, and then bro, you could even see the point where like the refs started to like. I'm like, y'all on that? <laughs> Izzo got teed up. I'm oh, like, wow. this is a game that like this. So I'm really not confident. Just. 
that is just one team that's going to blow everybody away. I think this is going to be a year that everybody's going to get better over the course of the year, which is good. So everybody's going to take their lumps early across the league, I think, which is going to be good. But then come late De- late January, February, I think this team could really get rolling. And that's how that's how a lot of Painter teams, a lot of the Purdue teams under his under his era, they struggle a little bit coming out the gate. And you look at uh, when I believe it was PJ and all them were seniors. Uh, they lost. They were about to lose three straight in um, battle for Atlantis. Ripped off nineteen in a row. Uh, Twenty nineteen with Carson and Klein, they were six and five, I believe. Six and four, six and five. And five I and six. Eight. Yeah. And don't 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 uh hey duh, we're not gonna forget my team the um best start school <laughs> best scars best star school history. Uh-oh. you know. Just going. What part is? I think we went like thirteen or fifteen and zero or something like that. Yeah, we ain't lose. We ain't lose. I don't think we lost until we played um I think we lost we played Butler in the crossroads in December. So like December twentieth. And that was yeah. the only we lost we not that was the only game we lost non conference because we won our preseason tournament. We beat Florida in the championship, and then we, uh, we won that. And then that was also a year where non-conference was a little light. <laughs> okay. No, that's tough because we lost. We almost – that same year, we almost did. We lost in the Thanksgiving championship. But we won undefeated in the Big Ten in, uh, at, at home that year. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I heard it. And Coach O, you talk about that all the time. Oh, man. <laughs> that's why I, I think this year in the Big Ten, I think this year in the Big Ten – the team that has the best home record, and if you can win half of your road games, you're gonna win the league. You can win your home games and just half of the road ones. I think that's gonna be the league winner this year. It's my prediction. I won't argue that road tough. People don't realize how hard that road is. I don't care you it. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't even know who the worst team right now in the Big Ten. Quote unquote. I ain't never played in Nebraska, but I could even imagine just going to Nebraska. Nebraska's still loud. It's still. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean, like they like because it's. I get, it must not be nothing to do because they still was coming to the games last year. Cause I caught a couple games out in Nebraska. They still was coming. You think that Penn, is that's the protein. You, you think yeah, exactly. And even yeah. like a Penn State. Penn State Shrews is doing a good job building it, but it's still hard to play there because it's so quiet sometimes. And it's, it's hard to play there to sleep. You can't go to sleep there. <laughs> that, <laughs> let's, let's talk before we even get to the game. That's bro. People don't realize that how some teams do. You like the locker room. Uh, the Bears, like Ohio State, love the treatment you go to that hotel. Penn mm-hmm. State look like a hundred house movie. I I love Coach Shrews. I'm always supporting, but you go to Happy Valley, it ain't nothing happy there but the football state. <laughs> I love like Penn State football, basketball uh, arena. Uh, arena dope. The arena's amazing, but that's a tough game. That's funny, man. Hey, you guys. know that's a sw- Hey guys, I'm gonna have to wrap this thing up um kind of abruptly, but I appreciate you both. Um, I tell you this all the time. Appreciate you both for embracing me and and coming on. Uh for people listening, these two guys are gonna be coming on throughout the season. Talk a little bit about uh Purdue Hoops. Duh, appreciate you having me, man. Congratulations again. New media, love to see it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. Let it, let, let me let us know whatever you need, big dog. No, yep. no.